there he is. It's Paul Reiser. Looks like he's in a hotel room somewhere. Hi, Paul. Now, why did you guess hotel room? You're right, but what gave it away? Uh, the curtain behind you just has that hotel room look. Um, but you know, <laughs> I, I'm sparing you the rest of the hotel room. So you're welcome. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, Paul, I, I've been reading about you lately. I know that you're going to do some stand-up. Uh, I just was stunned. I, you're, you've co-written the book with the great musician Michael McDonald. I know you are also a songwriter and musician. How did that hookup take place? You know, it's a crazy thing. He, Michael and uh, we became friends a couple of years ago. And uh, over the years, I, and I've always been a big fan, so I was, like, thrilled to meet him. And then I would ask him questions that I never understood about his career. Like, well, how could you be a Steely Dan when you're also with Doobie Brothers? And all these questions. And then finally I joked, I said, you should write a book, you know, so I wouldn't have to bother you. He went, well, I, you know, I, I th I've thought about it. I don't know how to do that. I said, well, it just so happens I've written a bunch of books. And uh, we started just talking like this on Zoom, frankly, and uh, put all his stories together. And I just helped him put it together. And it's fascinating because now I understand his career. He, he's so singular. And there aren't a lot of guys who have worked with as many people across a uh, wide spectrum as he has over so many years. And so very proud. It's coming out May something, May 20th. And I think you can pre-order it now, or I can read it to you. Let me grab it. <laughs> <laughs> we got a few minutes. Now, when You've written a number of books, and when you do the audio book, that has to take, a, a, a great deal of time. And ever when you're doing that, do you say to yourself, wait a minute, I can make this yeah. I can make this funny, or I can make the, do you do ad lib, or do you have to stick to the script? Uh, it's, so funny. it's so funny, it's because we're in the midst of doing that now. He's doing it, I'm not doing it. I'm just, you know, uh, helping him sort of through that. But it's, it's hard, because you want to go, you work really hard to make it a book so somebody can read it, and then you have to come in and read the book. It's like, well, <laughs> especially with stand-up, my book, I remember I would take all my stand-up, which I was used to performing, and I would try and make it accessible as written, and then I would read that. I go, well, now it's lost 40% of the funny. <laughs> it sort of has dripped away. But his book is, his book is, there's a lot of funny stories in this book, but it, it, there's a lot of really uh, deep, wonderful, uh, rich stories about his life and his journey, which is very unique, but I think hopefully relatable to a whole bunch of people. So I'm very proud of the way that came out. Yeah, we're talking with Paul Reiser, and one of the many things that he's doing is he's been working with Michael McDonald. I know you've got a stand-up gig coming up. I'll talk about that in a second. I also, and I don't know much about this, but I've been told you're working on a comic book. So here's the crazy thing, because I don't know anything about comic books, but somebody came up with an idea and that really made me laugh. They said, what if your character in Aliens, Burke, mm. what, if, what if he lived? I went, well, that's really funny. Because everybody you always, for years, people would say, you know, in Aliens, you played such a bad guy. What was it like playing such a bad guy? <laughs> and I would always joke, well, you say bad, I say misunderstood. <laughs> so now, <laughs> if he lives, I said, well, let's tell the story of why he might have been perceived as a bad guy. Maybe there was some explanation. So Marvel, who knows a few things about comic books, uh, is putting it out the first. And my son, my 23-year-old son, who's like a comic book genius, uh, worked on it. There were like five of us writing and uh, he turned out to be a great writer. And it turns out all those years that I said, get out of your room and stop reading comic books. I was wrong. Apparently he's made a career now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so go to your local comic book store. It's called What If Aliens uh, Marvel's What If Aliens and uh, you'll see I was misunderstood the whole time. Wow. Aww. Yes. Aww. Paul, I know that you, know you were trained you as a musician. Right? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go. No, I was like, what's great about a comic book, you don't have to memorize any line. You don't even have to do anything. It's <laughs> yeah. just all, don't have to get up it's all there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Paul, you've done a whole bunch of things, but you started out as a musician. How did that transition go? Were you on stage in a band? You started being funny? and How, how did you switch to <laughs> no, being stand-up? I was never... Uh, you know, I was always... I always loved stand-up. When I was a kid, my friends were going to Led Zeppelin concerts. I was going to George Carlin concerts in the village, you know, and uh, Robert Klein and uh, Richard Pryor. I always loved comedy. I w and I played piano, so I was a music student in college, but I was never really going to make a career of that. I wasn't, like, good enough. <laughs> um, so there wasn't really a transition. It was like, this is fun, but I'm going to pursue comedy. 
which you know makes parents very happy after they've paid for four <laughs> years of college. <laughs> Let's, I'm gonna, just going to go and hang out at clubs and not make any money for years. Um, <laughs> they were thrilled. But yeah, that's what I started doing. That's what I, my goal was just to be a comedian. And I t ended up, when Mad About You was on the air, I took a lot of years off of doing stand-up. And then when it was over, I kind of was happy to be home and, you know, just uh, get off the radar for a while. So it's only been a few years that I've been back doing stand-up. Um, but that's my, you know, that's my first love. And it's always so much fun. So I'm going to be in, uh, in Troy, Ohio yep. next month, April 13th, Friday, Saturday, April 13th, at the... Uh, Arbogast Performing Arts Center. That's I right. don't know why it's called that. Do you know why it's called that? I don't. I'm Is guessing there was a Mr. Arbogast, I hope. And uh, it was very, uh, very nice of him. He opened his wallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's Troy, Ohio, Saturday, April 13th. Uh, we're speaking with uh, Paul Reiser. Hey, now, Paul, you grew up in the vinyl era. So did you have a particular comedy album? I know for me it was uh, Robert Klein, Child of the 50s, is the one that I listened to a thousand times. Was there a particular uh, record that you just played over and over, Carlin or Yeah, well, that Breyer? was one for sure. That was Robert Klein for sure. And uh, George Carlin's first records, AM, FM, and Class Clown. But the one that was, um, there was sort of my Rosetta Stone, the album that opened up my world was the 2,000-year-old uh, man, Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner. Sure. And uh, that came out early. That was out in the early 60s, and I didn't discover it till somebody pointed it uh, pointed me that way in when i was about 15 and i said i've i i just never heard comedy like that and laughed that hard and uh and then of course years later i ended up mel brooks I, both carl and mel uh were guest stars on mad about you mel brooks did about five episodes so it was like you know the king was coming and it was it was uh it was great to get to know these guys and work with them yeah. And you've worked with some, I mean, some really amazing people. Uh, the Comiskey Method well, was I'm, a great show a couple of years ago. I oh, loved yes. it. I saw every one of those. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Look at you. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the nice things is you get to sometimes uh, work with people you've long admired. So Comiskey Method on Netflix was working with Michael Douglas. It was great. And Alan Arkin, who was another one of my idols growing up. And, uh, you know, when that was the thing I'm mad about you. We had guest stars were our dream people all the guys that we all the people that we grew up with carol burnett and carol o'connor we had jerry lewis uh we had yoko ono not known for stand-up but very very funny <laughs> um, we had lyle lovett uh was the guy who married uh, helen hunt and myself on sh on the show uh we you know so we just were thrilled to get to meet and work that's one of the greatest parts of of this whole journey is getting to work and meet with meet and work with people that you admire so i've been very lucky i'm trying to remember didn't we talk to you about something with peter falk I'm, am i getting this right? Peter, no exactly peter falk i was going to bring it up but uh yeah peter falk was was the guy he was my my hero my acting hero and and uh not that I dreamed of being an actor. I think I dreamt of being a comedian, but I just loved Peter Fox. I wrote this movie. It's called The Thing About My Folks. We did it about 15 years ago. I think it was the last role that Peter did. And uh, he was great. You know, he was one of these guys that everywhere you went, people just adored him. Women, women found him charming. Guys all wanted to be with him. And he was lovely. He was cranky. <laughs> but he was, you know, I was lucky he liked me because if he if he, he didn't suffer fools, he was like, I don't think I care for this guy. He would just, he would just dismiss you. <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. Uh, uh, Paul Reiser, once again, live. And this is going to be so cool in person. Arbogast Performing Arts Center. Troy, Ohio, Saturday, April 13th. Be on the lookout for the comic book. Uh, you can go to Paul's website, and he's got all the information about all of his stuff, the various books, etc. And the one coming out about the great uh, member of the Doobie Brothers, Michael mcdonald who is by the way currently touring with the doobies again yes uh, tom you have you've done this before this is not your first uh, rodeo i can tell <laughs> <laughs> you, you seem to have a gift yeah <laughs> hardly uh paul i'm a big fan and uh i the, the, you've the career you've had is so incredibly varied yeah i mean you look at some of these uh, things uh some of these we've all seen it's one of those things where no one can see everything paul's done probably not even his family but wow and being like stranger uh, you know, things. I, well, it's been it's been an interesting ride, and and uh, I've been lucky enough to get to play with some nice people and work on some nice things. You know, by the way, 
get to be on the Bob and Tom show. I didn't see that coming, but look at you. <laughs> yeah, lucky you. I, I do yeah. have I, one last dumb question. I get, um, uh, I aggravate everyone all the time when I mention the album, The First Family. Now, with uh, Vaughn Meter. Vaughn Meter. Did that happen to cross your path at all, or is that, or were you a little too young for that? No, I, I we had that. That was one of the first albums that I remember. Uh, and that wasn't me. My parents bought that, but it was sort of uh, ubiquitous. Everybody had yeah. that album. It seemed it was the, it was uh, the can it was in the heart of Camelot, and everybody loved the Kennedy family. And uh, that was a great <laughs> was a great. Uh, I don't even know. I haven't heard it in sixty years. I don't know how great it, it, it was. It was the largest selling vinyl album in history for a while there. And when when you mention yes. to people of a certain age, they go, "Oh my God, yeah." And then of course the famous Lenny Bruce line. Yes. Uh, you know, rough day yeah. for Vaughn Meter. On that yes. note, on that note, Paul, <laughs> thanks but so I much like for your time. Current. It's good that we're current, Tom. Yeah. You and I, we can talk about all the latest developments yeah. in the Vaughn Meter. <laughs> 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 thanks, Paul. We'll see you. Thank you. Had a great Thank show you. in Troy.